Hand cannons were once one of the most used weapon archetypes, no matter what DLC was out. We had 180s in Warmind, 120s when Rampage allowed them to two-tap, and 140s for most of the remaining time. Even before Destiny 2, hand cannons were a popular pick, but if you have recently gone into a quick play match, you might have noticed a lack of hand cannons. You might run into a team every once in a while that has a hand cannon or two on it, but nothing like before. Before Season 18, you couldn't get into a game without half the enemy team running a hand cannon. But now, we have pulse rifles and scout rifles. So, what happened? Why has there been a sudden change of heart? The core crucible weapon, for years, just thrown to the side. So, to start, hand cannons themselves have not really changed at all. Despite people wanting them to be nerfed for about as long as they have existed, these have not really been touched at all, apart from the removal of 150 hand cannons, which do not even affect their usage, just allowing guns like Ace of Spades to thrive. Everything around hand cannons has changed, leading to them falling down from their number one spot. Before we get into the main things that have led to the decline, I would just like to say that I do not use mods such as targeting adjusters or targeting mods, and I play on a controller. These two things may shape my experience in a different way than other people. Before we get into the hand cannons themselves, I'm going to look at the main weapon that has replaced hand cannons, pulse rifles. And if we're going to be a little more specific, it is high impact frame pulse rifles. To find out why, we need to go back to season 10. This was the first season that I got Legend and the Glory rank and I had just gotten my Retrix, the only pulse rifle at the time to have Desperata. The gun was decent but was very hard to use as it was a high impact frame, and at the time, you need to hit all 6 headshots to guarantee the .67 TTK. Otherwise, you are probably going to lose the fight. This led to people ignoring them, so Bungie implemented a buff in Season 11, Season of Arrivals, giving them a 5 crit 1 body. This made it significantly easier to get the 2 burst. Lightweight pulses are another common pick as of late, and once again, if we go back a couple of seasons to Season 17, Lightweights were given a buff, Lost some 7 crit 1 body at max resilience compared to the 8 crits needed before. You might notice that this looks very similar to the high impact change, and was actually supposed to have a very similar effect, getting them both out of a rut that they were stuck in. Specific guns and perks also have had a big play in why hand cannons are unable to compete in the onslaught of pulse rifles. The main guns that people are using are the Messenger, the Battler, and Dead Man's Tale. The Messenger is popular because of both Desperado and Kill Clip, depending on which one you prefer. The Battler is just a really consistent gun, and Dead Man's Tail seems like it really shouldn't be good with a 1 second TTK, but the range and consistency makes it one of the highest used guns. All of these are long range weapons, leading the people that are using them to stay farther back. High impact frame pulse rifles also get a benefit for standing still, keeping people in one spot when they're using it. The range difference on hand cannons and pulse rifles are actually not too far off with 41 meters of range on messenger and 35 meters on palindrome. But even with this little difference of range, it is much easier to use pulse rifles at range than hand cannons as hand cannons can become inconsistent past 25 meters, especially if you're not pacing your shots. High impacts also have more flinch compared to other weapons, making it even harder to challenge them at range. Dead Man's is also just a 120 hand cannon, but with more range and less bloom at range. Barricades of Sightanes and Overshield benefit the stagnant gameplay as well, making an infinite loop of more and more people staying back. But how do hand cannons actually stack up? Are they unusable, or are people just throwing in the towel a little too early on hand cannons? I'm going to be focusing on each archetype separately, starting with precision frame hand cannons. These are the least used hand cannon archetype, with the highest used 180 being Frontier's Cry from Iron Banner, and this number is currently inflated as people are using it much more during Iron Banner week. Even with this inflation, it was 131st place for weapon usage in quick play and 172nd in competitive. Despite the lack of usage of these kinds of guns, they're actually pretty good. My favorite hand cannon in Destiny is actually the nature of the beast from Season of Arrivals. During the Solstice update, Precision hand cannons got a buff allowing for a two head, two body kill. Now there are two main things that people don't like about 180s, their TTK and their range. Their optimal TTK is 1 second solid, but all body shots is only 1.33 seconds. So not only do they only have a 50% headshot accuracy for optimal TTK, if you only hit bodies, 
there's only a 0.33 second longer TTK. That's a really strong flinch with the ability to throw shots out faster than any other hand cannon. These two things together make it good against high impact frame pulse rifle. You can flinch them back elongating their TTK letting your 1 second TTK become viable. And if you get flinched, you still have a chance of killing them as you only need to hit 2 of your headshots to secure the kill. The problem is that this only works if you're in the range of your hand cannon. This brings up the other thing people complain about, the range. 180s actually have the lowest range out of any hand cannon type, with my favorite, Nature of the Beast, having a base range of 27 meters without any perks. But fortunately, guns can get perks. With the right perks of Sure Shot, Accurized Rounds, and Range Finder, you can get up to 33 meters on Nature. This is almost as far as Pound Drum at 35. And this is actually the wrong using on these clips. So honestly, I think that these two issues are actually not problems and they're just blown out of proportion. If you're having trouble using hand cannons against pulse rifles, see if you have a nature or another 180 that has some good range perks. You might be surprised how well it does. Moving on to adaptive frame hand cannons, this is the most used hand cannon archetype for its consistency, range, and TTK. Out of the top most used hand cannons in quick play, 7 of them are 140s, with 2 of the 3 that are not 140s being Crimson and Last Word, both not being part of a standard archetype. The only one that is of the normal archetype is Frontier's Cry, which as I mentioned earlier is currently inflated from Iron Banner. These are clearly the most popular, but why, and why the sun shift? Even though 140s have more range than 180s, I feel that their effective range is actually shorter as they have more recoil and more balloon, making it harder to hit shots from farther away. The strengths and weaknesses of 180s and 140s are actually reversed. The optimal DTK is 0.87 seconds if you hit 3 headshots in a row. The problem is that there is no room for error in this, so if you miss one shot that TTK will be bumped up to 1.33 seconds, which is the same as all bodies for a 180. This can be detrimental on a fight. You're also sitting right at the edge of being able to 3 tap with 70 damage per headshot. Just 5 damage a drop off can lead you to not having your optimal TTK on some targets depending on their resistance. This means that if you want to be able to take advantage of the abilities that 180s have over other hand cannons, you need to be close so flinch doesn't knock you off, bloom doesn't screw you over, and you can actually use your .87 TTK. This leads to an aggressive playstyle with either a sniper for the extra range or a shotgun to complement your aggressive playstyle. Whether intentional or just from feedback, aggressive gameplay has actually been nerfed multiple times recently. In Season 15, we saw a nerf to sliding, increasing flinch 5-fold while sliding, and decreasing stability by 20. This makes sliding around a corner to challenge very difficult. This led people to going into the air more to have the first shot and be less predictable than just walking around the corner. We then saw the introduction of airborne effectiveness as a way to fight stompies and one-shot snipers in the air. This really solidified the passive playstyle, as not people can watch an angle without worrying about getting killed from the air. Since it's hard to push someone without being at a disadvantage, people sit farther back, making it even harder for hand cannon users to effectively kill their enemies. 120 hand cannons are slightly more popular than 180s and are actually worse overall. They have a little more range and can two head one body, but also have a 1 second TTK. The body shot TTK is 1.5 seconds and they also have the problem of too much range while not being able to hit shots at that range, just like 140s. I would say that 120s have been hit really hard as they were already not good, then Rampage got nerfed not allowing them to 2 tap with 1 stack of Rampage, making them even worse. Since 140s can kill faster and 120s are only slightly more forgiving, I would say that 140s are honestly just better. They both have the same weaknesses but 140s just have the faster TTK. 120s also have to compete directly with Dead Man's Tail as they are both 120s and Dead Man's is just easier to use. I found that for me, the only decent 120 was Sturm. In retrospect, hand cannons aren't dead. Even though 140s are difficult to use, you can still kill with them, especially if you're using 150 instead like I am. 180s are actually really good, but at least for me, 120s aren't going anywhere.